So let's start the video right here around Venus. You're probably aware that Venus is already really hot, but it's actually supposed to be even hotter. Even though the average atmospheric temperature here is about 460 Celsius or about 870 Fahrenheit, because of the proximity to the Sun, very thick atmosphere and all of the CO2, the temperature here is supposed to be much, much higher. I remember doing some calculations and it's actually something like 800 Celsius on average. And the reason Venus is much cooler than it should be is because of what's known as albedo, the property of reflectivity of a certain object. Although albedo by itself comes from the root alba, which means white. So it can also be described as the whiteness of the object. And because of various aerosols in the upper atmosphere of Venus, it's very, very reflective. Its albedo is approximately 0.76 which is one of the main reasons why we don't even see the surface. But obviously it's not really a mirror, because the light that's reflected here is more or less diffuse. I mean, technically you could use computer simulations to try to work out the original image that's reflected here, but because all of this involves very unpredictable atmospheric conditions, this would not be very easy. The point here is that 76% of all light striking the upper atmosphere is reflected back into space, making this the most reflective planet in the solar system. In contrast, Mercury is extremely low in albedo and does not reflect much, and our home planet is somewhere in between. The average albedo for Earth is about 0.3. Although here things do actually differ quite a lot depending on what you're actually looking at. So for example, things like snow and ice are approximately 80% reflective, which is why the more ice there is, the more the planet reflects the heat, and the more likely it's going to maintain cool conditions. Intriguingly, this is also one of the reasons why during the glaciation period it was very difficult for Earth to warm up to melt all the ice. It was just reflecting all of the light. In contrast, water does not reflect as much and is thus able to absorb more heat. Then we also have clouds that do reflect things as well, and so for places like Earth, the albedo effects are actually extremely dynamic and play a very big role in maintaining atmospheric temperatures or in dramatically changing conditions on the planet. Ok, well that's the solar system. How wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing something else discovered really far away that the scientists are now describing as the most reflective exoplanet discovered so far. Although the press release from the European Space Agency unfortunately used the word mirror. Yeah, no, that planet does not act like a mirror at all. It has a very high albedo, but it's not going to be producing a picture of your face if you look into its atmosphere. Anyway, so what exactly was found and why is this planet kind of exciting? So once again, this is one of those planets that technically shouldn't exist. Or at least it's a planet that we didn't think would exist. It's approximately 4.7 times the radius of planet Earth. It's also about 29 times as massive as Earth. So in some sense, it's what's known as hot Neptune. It's actually orbiting around its parent star at a relatively close distance with a single orbit of just 19 hours. But its size to mass parameters are not really very common. This is actually one of the rarest planets discovered so far. But most of its features are probably due to its extreme heat. Temperatures of 2100 Kelvin, or about 1800 Celsius, 3300 Fahrenheit. Right now this is believed to be the hottest such planet ever discovered. Not THE hottest planet, just the hottest hot Neptune. But the reason the scientists think this planet should not exist, or was never found before, or why this planet is in so-called Neptunian desert, is because if you look at the mass to orbital period distribution, you're actually not going to find any Neptunian planets in orbits very close to the star. And here it's defined as an orbital period around a star of less than 4 days, where these ice giants or Neptunian planets receive huge amounts of radiation and thus most likely cannot retain their relatively light gas atmospheres, eventually evaporating, leaving behind some kind of a core. These cores generally have a name, they're known as Ktonian planets. You can learn about previous discoveries of these unusual planets in one of the videos in the description. And so having these gas giants, similar in mass to Neptune, orbiting so close to the star is technically completely unexpected. Yet this object known as LTT 9779b seems to be there, at a distance of 260 light years away from planet Earth, and more importantly, producing relatively strong albedo. In case you're wondering how this was discovered, here what the scientists usually do is observe the planet as it orbits around the star, noticing the slight changes in brightness. But in this case they realized that this planet was actually reflecting a lot of light, almost definitively suggesting that this was a planet with a bit of approximately 0.8 or even higher. So about 5% higher than Venus. 
but it is generally very similar to Venus in its overall albedo and possibly even in its appearance. Both planets are expected to have very similar white-ish atmosphere if seen from the outside, although in case of this exoplanet, because its temperatures are much higher, it's also most likely glowing in a relatively dim red light, especially on the far side of the planet. But overall it might look something like this, possibly a more reflective, shinier version of Venus, but also dramatically larger in size. It's even larger than Neptune actually. But the question here is of course, what's happening with this planet, why is it so reflective and how is this planet even possible? Well, the only explanation right now that makes sense is in regards to the clouds that seem to circulate around the planet and the atmospheric content. It's unlikely to be similar to Neptune or Uranus or any other common gas giants. It's actually extremely likely to have clouds made out of heavy metals, things like for example titanium, and even things like silicates or basically rock. With the current model suggesting that there are several layers, one being titanates or gas of titanium, another one being silicates or particles of glass circulating above, which has two potential effects. One is the increased albedo or reflectivity of the planet, and two, because this gas is much heavier, since it's made out of bigger atoms, despite the proximity to the star and despite this being a gas giant, it's able to create a permanent atmosphere that does not escape and actually stays around the planet, forming a very unusual cloud deck. And here honestly it's even difficult to imagine what any of this would look like. We essentially have a gas giant that contains silicate and metallic atmospheric conditions, with these metallic clouds allowing this planet to become so large and to then also become so reflective. But since this planet is also slightly more massive than Neptune, it also has more gravity to hold on to a little bit more atmosphere. And so it's most likely a combination of different factors that allows this planet to physically exist and to possibly even maintain permanent atmosphere without losing too much. It's also quite possible that this planet was a lot larger before and potentially contained a lot of other gases, but they probably escaped over time, especially as this planet migrated across the star system and moved closer to the star. Because that's probably what happened here. It's quite unlikely that this formed so close to the star, because if it did, there's really no explanation for how this could have happened. And so even though at these temperatures we do expect the atmosphere to completely disappear through evaporation, it's clearly not happening and the planet is real and definitely seems to have a very thick atmosphere inflated to almost five times the size of planet Earth. But if it's the amount of these metallic elements that allows this planet to exist, where exactly did all of these metals come from? Generally we don't expect gas giants to contain that many, so there's maybe a chance that it did involve some kind of a planetary collision. Or maybe it basically ate one of its smaller neighbors, which could have also resulted in the change of orbit, making the planet approach much closer to the star. Although naturally, similar metallic conditions and metallic atmospheres have been seen around much more massive planets similar to Jupiter. It's just a little bit more difficult to explain when the planet is less massive, and especially when the planet is very similar to Neptune or Uranus. So definitely a pretty unusual and a pretty cool discovery. But when it comes to albedo, or I guess being a mirror, yeah no, it's definitely not a mirror. And its albedo is not even that surprising either. As a matter of fact, there's an object in the solar system whose albedo is much higher. More than one object actually. For icy objects like Enceladus, the moon of Saturn, the albedo is about 1% higher than this planet. But the mysterious dwarf planet known as Eris, discovered on the outskirts of the solar system, has an albedo of 0.99, This object right here reflects 99% of all of the light striking its surface. And most likely because of a relatively smooth surface, but also because of a certain type of ice that seems to cover the entire surface as well. It's actually not entirely clear why it's so reflective, but it definitely is. And so chances are in the next few years we're going to discover even more reflective planets out there and something that's going to beat this record pretty quick. In contrast, you might want to check out the video about the least reflective planet discovered a few years ago somewhere in the description. That planet was basically pitch black, and having such a low albedo is even more unusual. But anyway, until future discoveries from some kind of an exoplanet or until another unusual planet that shouldn't exist, that's pretty much it. Check out all the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.